Salesforce security, restriction rules, and scoping rules. As we dive into more of Salesforce security and record level sharing, we're looking at two new add-ons which have been recent ads. One is restriction rules, and two are scoping rules. And we're gonna dive in and talk about how they behave with Salesforce security. We're now moving into sharing set five, restriction rules and scoping rules. So we're talking about record level sharing and visibility. These are mechanisms that control which records can be seen. This assumes that you've got object level access through the profiles and permission sets, separate set of access. Now what we're talking about are mechanisms, some are out of the box, some are by code, configuration or code. We're talking about configuration for these two mechanisms. And these, um, we're gonna be talking about them as set 5A, restriction and scoping. And these are two relative newcomers to the Salesforce tools. So restriction rules is a second level filter that restricts access to records. This sits on top of any existing record level security or visibility. And this applies with this, uh, a strong fil a filtering of the records. Now, scoping is a more soft filtering, which is a way to add a scope onto list views, reports, and dashboards. So restriction rules are strict, scoping rules are soft. So restriction rules let you enhance the security. Um, it allows you to add these restrictions on to external objects, which is powerful. We didn't used to have record level security on external objects, now we do. We have contracts, tasks, of even events, and custom objects. Now, based on the license, you can have up to two active restriction rules and five for performance and unlimited. However, a key element is you can only have one active restriction rule per for a, a single user. So these work across the board, list views, lookups, related lists, reports, search. These restriction rules act at the fundamental level of Salesforce. Now, when you apply it, it sits on top of the existing mechanisms and narrows the list. Um, now, key is where they don't apply, um, you see some of the caveats about external objects and using whether it uses the standard OData2, OData4, and cross-org connectors. And um, they also recommend you disable search. So these are key elements when using some of the restriction rules on external objects. Let's talk about how to implement restriction rules. So first, you need to turn off Salesforce Classic. They're not guaranteeing that all the classic mechanisms apply back to restriction rules. They are available for cust cust you know, the custom objects. And here are the restrictions. You'll see I highlighted the two restriction rules per object and five restriction rules per object for performance. Now, if for some reason you have more than one restriction rule and you're gonna be creating criteria at the user level or the permission level to decide whether they are or do not run, if for some reason you have more than one restriction rule, Salesforce won't apply both of them. It'll choose to apply one of them and you won't be able to control which one. So you as the configurator need to decide and control the access to the restriction rule. So I'm talking about an object in my system called the airport. So I created a rule. I have, I created a criteria and I actually created a flag on the user. And then it decides to narrow down my list and the restriction rule. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you through, through and look at that. So in this org, I have an object called airport and I've loaded a list of all the airports in the world from public information. And what I've done is on the object here, setup manager, and there is actually a new item right here called restriction rules. So here, and as you see, based on this license, you get one of two active rules. I have created a small airport only. What we have is we have a type of airport, small, closed, helipad, large. And what I've decided to demo this is I have created a restriction rule on this and let's actually see what else I'm gonna duplicate. 
I am going to go to Setup. We're going to go to Object Manager. We're going to go to User. And I've created a custom field on User called Is Small Airport Only. So this is just for example that I've created an Is Small Airport Only field on the user. So if this is checkbox is checked, then that'll activate the restriction rule. And what we want to do is only allow them to see small airports. So this is a rule sitting on top of any other record level visibility and controls, and it will restrict any user with this checkbox checked to only be able to see small airports. So they'll only see these small airports on top of any other sharing they have access to. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to restriction rules by going to the object manager, going to the airport. And here is the restriction rules. And we're going to take a look at this restriction rule. So it's called small airport only. It's active. Now I chose, you can choose the criteria. I chose, you can either create a permission driven criteria or a user level criteria. I chose a user level criteria. And based on this, I chose a field on the user, which is this small airport equals true. So this rule will kick in if the flag is true on the user, and then it'll apply a filter. And the filter of what they can see is a record field, OA airport type equals small airport. So if this restriction rule is active, then any user with this checkbox will only be able to see small airports. Now I'm in under a different user. This is Paul the pilot. Paul the pilot's logged in and I had checked the box on Paul the pilot and we can see that by going to the users. Let's go to the users. And in fact, we're going to go here to users, users, Paul the pilot. And I have checked the box is small airport only. So by checking the box, the restriction rule kicks in. And now I'm inside of a different browser as Paul the pilot. And you can see that as I sort, the user only sees small airports. So this is separate on top of any other record or level of security. I could have done this with a criteria rule, but one thing to understand is this restriction rule sits on top of any other sharing of visibility. So I may have other visibility granting access to airports, but the restriction rule kicks in at the end and adds a second level of filtering that hides this. So this is a final narrowing filter at the end. So that is restriction rules. Just make sure you that you can you only are limited by your restriction rules and you need to be careful about which restriction rule kicks in. Now one powerful use of restriction rules is you could have like a soft deleted flag and you could apply restriction rules to hide all soft deleted records from all your users except for sysadmins. So this could offer, as long as you're careful with your limitation of no more than two rules and the rule only applying to one, one rule applying to a user, this could be a powerful final mile set of filtering that you can apply. Now we're going to move on to scoping rules. Scoping rules are a softer set of filtering. They don't affect the global visibility, but they are a way of including them on certain list views or reports or in circle, certain SQL statements. So they behave similar to restriction rules, but you've got to activate them. Otherwise, the standard sharing and visibility kicks in. So in scoping rules, the first thing I want to do is you need to be able to allow the user to see these. If you look at the profile, I showed a checkbox, view restriction and scoping rules. You actually have to add these in as a permission set. So I created a permission set to view the restriction and the scoping rules. And you can have two active, and you have pretty much the same counts, two active scopings in dev and five actives in performance and unlimited. The scoping rules are available custom objects, accounts, cases. Notice this does not affect external objects. 
So there is a narrowing ability on the scoping rules. And it follows a very similar paradigm. And we're gonna take a look at that in a different sandbox. So I'm in a different sandbox and I've enabled the box and now you see scoping rules on account. And what I've done is a similar paradigm on the user. So let us clone this. What I've done is after looking to account, I saw a field called rating, warm, hot, cold. And this is just an arbitrary selection of this field. And I said, let's create a filter to only show accounts that were hot. And so what we're gonna do is this is a scoping rule, not a restriction rule. And if I look at the users, and then I were to come over here to Paul Private, I have this field is hot only. So this is a pure arbitrary checkbox on the user which if checked will activate the scoping rule. This is a softer user level toggle. So we have a scoping rule. I go to the account. I have my rule is hot only. And it follows the same paradigm. So the user criteria is hot only equals true. And if the account rating equals hot. So this is a scoping rule, it's softer. Now what we're gonna do is if I went to my account, I created a list view called test all accounts and I go to the filter. Now you'll notice that this has a different value now. Let me make it a little bigger. So I can filter on all accounts, my accounts or filter by scope. So this filter by scope will kick in the scope that I set and then now, but however, this user doesn't have the scope apply. So we're gonna switch over to a user that does. So this is another user in that org that we saw the is hot checkbox, Paul Private. And you'll notice that they have test all accounts and they only see the hot. Now, if I go to the standard list view, they see all of them. But right here on the test all accounts, I have activated the scope. So this is a, a, a more narrow of a use case where you have a toggleable filter that can apply at the user level and you can include it in reports or list views. A Little more narrow of, a, narrow of a use. So we've just gone over restriction rules and I think they're very powerful because they apply a second level filter after all record sharing and you could just hide records. I've even heard that they may work on master detail relationships, and I'm gonna test that. And so this allows you to apply one final level of filtering at, after you've created your share, share groups. So very powerful tool, and you should take a look at it. Um, scoping rules are a little more nebulous, a little more of a nice to have inside of your list views and reports. But keep these as tools in your toolbox as you design your sharing. So I hope this was helpful in restricting the share. Join me again, same bat time, same bat channel. Subscribe to www.stevetechark.com or go to my YouTube channel, Steve Tech Arc, and press that subscribe button. Thank you very much. Have a great day.